Hello and welcome to chapter 23 of the video tutorial how to set up an online shop with Dreamweaver and PHP. Well, so far we were with the purchase process. <coughs> we had managed to introduce the first item in our trolley or in our budget. But before we will fix um, a couple of details you warned me about. Well, um, I'm building the page and I always leave something around. I like that you realize and tell me. For example, one of the problems we had, <coughs> well, I commented it previously, is reminding you that in in connections where the connection takes place choose connection here the first thing we always made was a session start this will make us keep our user open in all the pages of our site so the call to choose connection has to be done in the very first code line in all of our pages <coughs> If I haven't included it in any of the pages, I should do it. For example, if I'm not wrong in some... For example, this one, it isn't in Access. I don't know if in any other <coughs> in User Modify it is, you see? The idea is that you include this line in all the web pages you're making and in those we have made before, okay? I won't put it now because I prefer to get the error so that we can remember it in the next chapters. It's a topic you told me and it's fine because we should put it in every page. Okay, the second topic is that in chapter 22 there was a little, <coughs> a little problem. For example, when I logged in, I will do it with my false user, horvidu2 at gmail.com and xxxx. When I was watching a product, a follower told me this. Um, I could see here the buy product because I had already logged in. I mean, I entered the system and it's perfect. So I should get this here. The problem is that when I logged out and I get back to boot, for example, I still have this buy product link. Why is this? It's because if you realize, um, let's see where we can see this in, in watch product. Okay. In watch product, we made a comparison here. I will put this in the middle for us to have a look. You remember we added a code which is here, <coughs> which goes if the session <coughs> if the session user is set <coughs> and it's different from zero, so let the trolley appear, and if it isn't, let the register option appear. Right. Uh, when we leave, when we log out, you remember. Uh, we go to a page called user logout. If you realize when I log out I just assign these session variables to an empty value. Okay? I made a mistake and made them equal to zero. Here, you see? This zero is different from empty. I won't go into that now because many of you have already realized <coughs> it's wonderful because that way we can fix it on the run. I'm going to save this page. I get back here and now it would work perfectly, right? Well, once this topic has been fixed, there are many more to fix, many problems that have popped out and need to be fixed. As you see, the page has been growing and we have to bear in mind lots of things, right? So next thing we will do is, um, well, I will log in again. In some way, we will complete the page in, in which get our, um, our trolley, so, <coughs> so to say. If I'm not wrong, we have purchased these Wellingtons, although it's not such Wellingtons, but a pair of regular shoes, but never mind. I will purchase these high heel shoes by product, and this took us to a page we call Trolley List, in which we just type Bravo here. We will change this page so that we start having displayed what we have purchased, right? So we will go to the page Trolley List PHP. Gonna close this one. Now I go to the Trolley List PHP. Here it is. And the next thing we will do is write in here trolley and um, down here we will make a query to the table of the database in which we are storing our purchase products in this case tbl trolley as you probably remember okay i will open the database for a moment for us to remember this uh, although i think you have it pretty fresh in your mind still we go to shoes and in the table trolley you see I've entered the item of last day, chapter 22, and today's item, chapter 23. The counter is just a numeric counter. The ID user belongs to user2 that, as you can see in table user, is 
is this one, Jorge Pepe. Um, the product is the ID product. We can watch it here. Product. Let's see. I don't know if I hit. Here it is. The ID product says I've bought a pair of Wellingtons and high heel shoes, numbers one and nine, right? The amount is one by now. We haven't given the chance to buy more than that by now. And if the transaction has been carried out or not, by now it hasn't as it's still in our trolley. Fine, let's close these two tables. Close, except this. Correct. And let's make a query to get the data from the active shoppers trolley. So um, we come here and make a new query. Record set. I think data trolley would be fine for this record set. And let's extract all the data from the trolley where the ID user is the one we have active in this moment. In this case, it would be var user, and uh, and if you remember, var user is an integer type preset zero, and this equals session session variable session. I think it was mm id user. I, I'm I'm not sure, but I can modify it later if necessary. And apart from this, I will add another condition. Bear in mind that in the value transaction, okay, when I get a zero, it's because that product is still in my trolley. When it equals one, it's because I've already purchased it. I mean, it will be a product from, from the past, so to say it. I mean, if I buy something today and issue the payment at the end, it will remain as code one in transaction okay. But if I enter again tomorrow, this product will not be there because I have already bought this product once. So uh, how do we make that it only displays those with a zero value? We just tell it um, we select trans transactions OK where and equals zero. And with this, it will already display the data. Let's see if I wrote properly the user variable, which is the most important one. I check it here and it's MMID user. Great. I did it by heart. As you can see here, it will extract all the products of the trolley belonging to the active user whose transaction OK equals zero, right? So far, we've got this around here. Now we will make the, the usual table here. We will go to insert table. I will choose two lines and columns thinking that they have to put the product's name, the amount and the price. And a fourth to modify the status, uh, I will say four. Except this will be the header column, so I type product. Here it will say units. Here it will be price, and here actions. In case I want to delete the product or whatever. Okay, uh, this will be the header line, so you can make a cuter design. But now I will explain this, and then you can get into fixing the design. Fine. First, the product. We have a look here and um, the query we have just made. So I drag and drop the product here. But bear in mind that I've got just the ID product. I haven't got the product's name. And take into account that in the trolley I just store the identificators of the items, or else I would need a very big and inconsistent table. Everything is ruled, most of the databases are ruled by the communication among IDs, which is what we're doing now. If you have a look at this table, you will realize we only see numbers. When What I'm telling you is, is that the user is Mr. Whoever, the product is such shoe, here the amount and here the type of transaction. I'm saying all this with just five numbers for you to have the idea of the power this database system has. You one needs to exploit its potential. To do so, we will perform a series of very easy functions because most of it will be copy paste, where, for example, it will extract the product's data. Something else for more complicated queries, I can obtain in this query the user and product data. It's straightforward. But I will do it the easy way, and later we will complicate it more and more, right? This can be done in many different ways. This one is maybe a little cheap and old fashioned, but I think it's interesting to do it this way to understand the process. To do so, we will bring here the ID product. The amount is, in fact, the data we already have. And so is the price. Well, no, the price is something we have to get to query first. So let's cast here the ID product. And in actions, for example, we will write delete. And so far, we will leave it like that. Okay. 
let's see what's happening by now I save I come here and so far I'm not having anything new because I cannot access either um, hold on one second ah, look look at this I wrote this and I'm not getting anything and you say hey why I'm not getting it what's going on right let's see let's do one thing we're going to start doing some bugging to check what's going on I have a query here that is extracting me the, the data, which is the query data trolley. How can I display in the screen that query to check if there is a potential error which must be around because this isn't working? I will write as follows. Echo this thing um, to display in screen this query to check what's going on. I update and up here it tells me select me from the table trolley where the user is zero and the table trolley transaction okay equals zero. There is something wrong here, this is right, but the user is wrong. It's a zero and should be a two, which is my username. Let's see why. Session MMID user, let's see if I wrote it right. You see, I made a mistake. I wrote a big a small I when it was a capital E. Such a silly thing and such a big difference. Uh, we can do two things. We can change it here or Well, yes, let's change it here straightforward because it doesn't allow me to you see here We don't get the select record set stuff just because we touch it a little as soon as I wrote this echo It automatically has the selected me I save and you see here it comes again It only appears here when I leave this code version just as it came to me, right? Fine, so now I can come here to this variable we added edit and change this I for a capital one it's good having these mistakes because many times it will be useful to correct other things I accept save and now let's have a look now it's fine it works correctly well by now I only get one line in the product but I purchased two items indeed why because I'm not repeating the, re the right region I'm repeating data but I'm not repeating a region how can we do it we've seen that before we select from TR to TR which is what makes me a whole line this is the line containing product, units, price and actions it would be the main line and this other TR contains the data fine, the one I'm interested in repeating is this one so I will tell it repeat region right? and I will tell it that in a trolley I don't want a product pagination if they are purchasing me 20 products first of all congratulations, it will be a great sale but I don't want a pagination here because it's not an adequate function for this area so I will extract all the registers from data trolley accept and it gives me the code that do while do while I have data I save and do you see how I get both products and if I had more I would get them here too <coughs> right the next thing we will be extracting the name of the product because if we show the client the product identificator he won't know what he's buying and we won't care either and we will display the price too first come the product's name so let's use our functions file which is in include, if I'm not wrong I'm going to arrange this a little, let me find it <coughs> ok, there it is I open functions and if you remember in functions we have got those functions we're going to use so far we just have this one to obtain the username in which we send an identificator and it answers back with the name which was also the username let's do one thing, first of all to distinguish things, I like adding quite a long comment here to distinguish one function from another because now this has got 48 lines but I can assure you it will have many more even more than a thousand you don't be scared because most of the code is copy pasted just changing parameters fine, we have obtained username now I want to make a function to obtain the product name so I select all this function copy paste it right underneath and rename it to obtain product name <coughs> the identificator is the variable I pass to it I will call it the same since I don't care and what I will select is the product's name how can I make that query if I'm not very skilled at handling databases it's a very easy query we go to the database, open the table product and the field that hosts the name is str name on the table tbl product that's the good thing of naming things properly str tells me that this is a string an inner string of characters the tbl differentiates me a table from a field it's one has its own tricks and I like doing it this way so I tell it, select me, I will delete this select me the str name was it str name? yes, it was of the table, what was the table's name? TBL product. Here it is. 
let's see if I type it properly. <coughs> Where the ID product, I will delete all this. ID product equals percentage S. <coughs> It would be the variable I'm passing in this case identificator. What the sprint f does is taking this line and changing each of the variables by one I'm putting on the right. Okay, in this case identificator is as if I was inside here. There are different ways of placing it, but we will do it like this. Carry out all the queries it has to do and automatically brings us back a name. In this case, str name, which is the product name. This, this would be give us the product name whose identifier found. Fine, we have to call this function, obtain product name. I copy it, go to trolley's list, and here I leave echo, oops, let's see if it allows me, product name, and via parameter, between brackets, I pass a product identificator, right? Trolley data, id product. I save, I save in functions too, and let's see what has happened. You see, we already get the product's name, wonderful. Okay, not to make this chapter too long, because we have made some programming and someone might get scared, though I think we are going very, very little by little. I probably some people might be bored of such a slow pace. I think it's pretty clear. I'm, I'm going to give you some homework for chapter 24, which would be basically obtaining the product's price, okay? I will give you a clue. It would be making a new function here, where we can obtain the product's price and if you want to go one step ahead let the euro sign appear behind the number euros or the currency you use in your country with this we will start chapter 24 and I think we will start right here I hope it's been useful to you uh, many thanks for your comments they encourage me to push this on and see you on chapter 24 okay regards